I'm going to give you a scripture in a moment that deals with uh, something about the, cap the bones of captains and kings. But that is the size of the head of Goliath. This is going to go in the museum where we have the area of some of the Old Testament history. This is not his skull, but this is how big the skull of Goliath was. So get the kids right now. And while I'm playing this, so you can back it up and show your kids. They love this stuff. This is how big. Now we, and what we did, we took the measurements from the Bible and that's approximately how big. So David had, would have had a head about my size and that would have been Goliath. So you can see why the giants of the Old Testament were so intimidating. Now I'm going to sit that there and I hope he doesn't, I hope he doesn't distract some of you. I can see him on the monitor that I'm looking at. You know, anyway, I wanted, I wanted to share that with you. Let the kids see that if you would. Ezekiel's prophecy, the vultures are coming. Now, let me give you the backdrop of this. This is the war of Gog of, Gog of Magog, which is recorded by the prophet Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapters 38 and 39. In the prophecy itself, uh, it reveals to you where the battle will take place. And it also mentions ravenous birds of prey. Ezekiel 39, 4 through 5 says it this way, you shall fall upon the mountains of Israel. These are the armies that will attack Israel in this war. You and all your troops and, and the people who are with you, I will give you to the birds. That's plural now, not a bird, but birds of prey. And by the way, a bird of prey is a flesh eating bird of every sort and to the beast of the field to be devoured. That the beast of the field, of course, would be the wild animals. Back in the 1980s, I took a trip to the Holy Land, which was the greatest. It's probably the greatest single travel event that I ever took because it would absolutely change the course of my life and also the direction of my ministry more into prophetic teaching. And people have often asked me, how did you get so excited about prophecy? And, and you've been doing this for, I mean, many, many years. I've been in ministry 46 years, so that gives you an idea. And I would, I would always tell them it was my first Holy Land tour in the 1980s. I found out three things. Uh, over a period of time after going to the Holy Land, and this was all about two or three years of my first trips, I found that there was a, uh, I found out that there was an earthquake fault line on the Mount of Olives that my tour guide's brother-in-law had been a part of discovering. And that was a part of the fault line that the prophet Ezekiel talks about. And again, I have a teaching, a DVD coming out on prophecy later on. It's not available now, but later on that explains all this. Then there was a, the miracle of the Eastern Gate, almost open twice, but remaining shut. We did a YouTube video on that recently. And then there's also the birds of prey. And I'm not going to go into great detail, but I'm going to give you just a nugget to tell you what, what I saw. In the book of Ezekiel, there's two locations of this war. The Bashan, which today is the Golan Heights in northern Israel, which is the border of Lebanon and Syria. And the area called the Valley of the Passengers on the east of the sea, referring to the Dead Sea, which would be in the country of Jordan. In 1986, we went to the Golan Heights area. Actually, I'm going to say this. It was later than 86 because uh, we didn't go there the first trip all the way up to what I'm about to tell you. I think it was the next year that we went up there, which, which may have been 86 because, you know, I lose track of was 85, 86, 87. So please bear with me on that. That's called getting old. We went to a place called Gamala which is called the Masada of the, of the North, which was a Jewish stronghold against the Romans. It's mentioned by Josephus in Jewish history, where the Jews jumped to their death off of these, this high cliff to prevent from being caught as slaves and sold into slavery by the Romans. And I started, when, when, it got, when we got up to Gamala, there was these huge birds. Now, when I say huge, uh, these were griffin vultures with a wingspan of between the, the smallest one would have been seven and a half feet, but probably up to, without a doubt, because they had been measured, nine feet. Now imagine a bird with a nine foot wingspan. And I was told that they were flesh eating birds and they began to populate after 1967. So in a recent report, the population in the region there is 206 of these birds, but there are hundreds of hundreds of other types of vultures and other birds, which would be considered scavengers or flesh eating birds. Many different birds have also been spotted in the canyons of Syria. Now, one of the reasons that these types of birds are showing up in the area of Syria is because of the war and the deaths by ISIS and the wars that have taken place. And so these birds begin to come into the area there and for obvious reasons, which is very sad, but we won't go into detail about. 
Now, Ezekiel said when this big war happens, they're going to be so many destroyed that if you take an entire army, five sixths of it, and these are these are these are these are, these are hundreds of thousands of troops are going to be slain and only one sixth will remain. And it will take them seven months to put up signs where there's corpses and bury the dead just to start burying them. So we're talking about a battle that there are just dead soldiers and probably people everywhere in that part of the mountains of Israel and Syria and Lebanon and through those canyons. So there will be flesh eating birds. So we know that I don't have to tell you that I saw these birds and they're populating and they're flesh eating in the areas where these battles are going to take place for those birds to show up. I do realize that. But I do think one more point is interesting that there is a bird migration that happens yearly in Israel. And there are approximately, according to, the, uh, to Israel and to the f sources that are responsible for bird watching and all these other things, there are an estimated 500 million, not thousand, million birds that migrate, that use the Syria African rift, but they migrate through them. And what happens is if they're flying out of Europe and they're coming into the Middle East, they're going into Africa, they fly and Israel has places where there are ponds and there is water and there's trees. And if they've flown a long time, so they, the report said sometimes these birds fly five, fly <laughs> five hours. That's kind of a tongue twister there, fly five, five hours without stopping. And so they, they come into Israel very briefly. Some of them stay there maybe for uh, a couple days or a few hours and then they, they leave the area. But guess when they migrate? in the spring and in the fall. Now, why is it important? Because there are three spring festivals that the Jews celebrate, Passover, Unleavened Bread, Pentecost. There's three fall festivals that they celebrate, which are uh, the time of uh, t uh, trumpets, and uh, I'm getting ahead of myself, trumpets, atonement, and tabernacles. And those birds will migrate in and out during those seasons. Now, this would only be a um, speculation but would it be possible that the War of Gog and Magog happens sometime during the festivals of the spring or festivals of the fall when there is this massive migration which is taking place? Because in the book of Ezekiel, even the animals and the birds of the air are shaken as a result of the war of Ezekiel 38 and 39. Well, I'm just going to tell you something. There's a whole lot more to this, but I don't want to tell you too much because the, length, the uh, tape would be too long. But there is a series, I think it was three hours that I taught on prophecies that are going to be fulfilled. It is not yet available as I'm talking now. I'm taping this in April of 2022. However, if you will keep watching Manifest with Perry Stone or you will keep watching YouTube, you will see a day when I will say, well, here is the DVD series with pictures. I mean, all these pictures and quotes that I have been preparing. They've been editing this for months. It's just not ready. But I'm letting you know, this is the kind of teaching that you're going to get in much more detail on this very special tape. I love Bible prophecy. I know that's why a lot of you keep up with our ministry. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up. If you just happen to be watching this and you're one of those that have not subscribed, would you do that? That is a big plus and a big help for us to get more people reached through the teaching that we have. God bless you again. And uh, watch this because there's always a great offer. Slay the devil. Kill Goliath. <laughs> we'll see you next time on the YouTube channel. Now available, Perry Stone's latest prophetic package. Discover America's future concealed in historical and biblical patterns in Perry's landmark book, The Final Ciphers and the Return of Christ. Perry has explored and tapped into important revelation and understanding, detailing 20 ciphers, including stunning prophetic cycles and patterns based on ancient and end time prophecies in scripture. Some of the chapters include Unlocking and Understanding God's Cipher System, The Prophetic Ciphers of Two Cities, The China Link, The Virus Cycles Echoing Ancient Ciphers of the Roman Empire, The Cipher of the Third Trimester, Birth Pains, America's Ciphers Parallel with Ancient History, Ciphers from the Roman Empire, America's Death of Conscience and Conviction, The Pompeii Cipher and the Forbidden J-Word, the Cipher of the Breach, When America's Hedge Was Cracked. The Future Cipher of the Image of the Beast, Revelation 13. Unlocking the Cipher of the Mark of the Beast, Revelation 13. Interpreting the Cipher of Strange Cosmic Signs. 
the money cipher, the clue before empires decline. Perry also answers the question, who can escape what is coming on the earth? And he will give a warning cipher from the Holy Spirit for the church. Included with the book is the two audio CD teaching, Preparing and Surviving During Hard Times. Is it time to leave big cities? And what are the steps to prepare for coming disasters and future trouble? Perry's latest prophetic package, which includes the book, The Final Ciphers and the Return of Christ, along with the two audio CD teaching series, Preparing and Surviving During Hard Times, are now available for a donation of just $35 or more. Visit perrystone.org or call toll-free 1-888-21-BREAD. That's one 888 212-7323. You may also write us at Perry Stone, P.O. Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320, and request offer number FC138. We look forward to hearing from you soon. If you enjoyed this YouTube content, there's an important website you should know about, perrystone.org. Perrystone.org is an essential resource for the latest books, audiovisual presentations, and digital products from Perry Stone Ministries, resources that cover the same kinds of topics discussed in the program you just watched. Stop in and see all that's available at perrystone.org.